for another Star Trek Starships collection review. Um, I am fortunate to have gotten my hands on issue 107, the Klingon Bird of Prey in attack position. Of course, have a magazine and the model is also here nearby. Um, uh, so we'll get to that momentarily, but at first, let's get to uh, the magazine. Uh, so as you can see, it's the Klingon Bird of Prey in attack position with it looks like three of them here on the cover. The image is awesome. Um, with some basic information here as well, it is considered a Burrell class in the 23rd century. It was launched uh, approximately. Uh, it was 139 meters long and this thing can go as fast as warp 9. Turn the page, the usual layout as all the magazines are in the collection. With more specifications, it is a uh, operated by the Klingon Defense Force, Burrell, Cavort, and D-12 classes. Uh, an operation approximately in 2285 to 2375, uh, 139 meters long to 678 meters long. So there were small ones and large ones. Uh, the crew varied in, in terms of the amount. Uh, warp 9 sustained is the maximum speed. Two to four disruptor cannons and one to two torpedo launchers. Turn the page and the front cover image is mirrored here, as well as some text about the various birds of prey and the sizes, of course, and different uh, features that some have and some don't. More on that, as well as screen caps from Star Trek 3, 5, 6, uh, Generations, and several episodes of Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. And this is a section on all of the, the famous birds of prey in the fleet well, that we've seen. You know, first, first and foremost, the uh, crude ship and the bounty, um, which is also the next one would be Captain Claw's ship from Star Trek V, followed by Chang's and the Pak from uh, Matter of Honor on Next Generation. The uh, D-12 Bird of Prey from owned and operated by the Duras sisters in Star Trek Generations. And finally, the, my favorite, the IKS Rotaran, uh, operated by General Martok on Deep Space Nine. This is the one that we saw the most throughout the entire Star Trek history with the Rotaran. And here is an awesome article on my favorite Klingon, perhaps, J.G. Hertzer, or the actor J.G. Hertzer, who played General Martok. Uh, he would later play Klingon Advocate Kolos on Enterprise, as well as playing the Vulcan, unnamed Vulcan captain and the pilot of uh, Deep Space Nine Emissary. He was the captain of the ill-fated Saratoga, and, and I believe he also played um, the Changeling Loss in Season 7 of, of Deep Space Nine, and he also played a Herogen on Voyager as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, there he is right there. And then, of course, he played a character name, a human character named Roy, in a uh, fan favorite episode, Far Beyond Stars. And uh, so, this is a nice little two or three page article about his, him, and his character, or the various characters he's played. And the on screen appearance page. Now, this is, again, pretty extensive. Uh, key appearances would be. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, Shadows and Symbols on uh, Deep Space Nine, and so on and so forth. And on the back is a picture of the Bird of Prey in attack position. So now, that's the magazine, and here is the model itself. Well, here it is. Um, unfortunately, I had to open it up prior because mine came damaged and uh, broken rather and I did request a replacement which will hopefully be here in the next few days um, but I managed to take a little glue and tried to doctor it up at least temporarily until the other one arrives hopefully it doesn't arrive broken but um, here it is uh, pretty nice I'll say um, for the most part it's exactly the same as issue number two or three that we got like two years ago and here is that one and here is the, the latest one uh, you can tell they're pretty much the same for the most part 
Uh, this one is actually slightly bigger for obvious reasons. Um, but as far as the detailing concerned, they're pretty much spot on exactly the same. Uh, the underside of the wings, uh, I would say the paint apps are a little bit darker on this one as opposed to this. Um, the engines, everything is the same in the back and the rear of the ship. Uh, again, the significant difference is this one is the wings in flight mode, warp mode, cloak mode, whatever. And then uh, this one is obviously in attack mode, battle mode, etc, 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 etc. So yeah, um, I'd say it's, a, it's still a nice model. Um, to be quite honest, I think this should have been issue number two. Um, while I always did like the Bird of Prey in attack mode, I don't really think it was necessary to have that model, unless you have it as a standalone model, unless you would have the wings movable, like some of the uh, toys did. And the Diamond Select also has movable wings. But I can understand, because no models in this collection have movable parts, for the most part. So yeah, um, for, for the most part, again, it's the exact same model. Uh, paint is slightly different, um, but it's still a, a, still a pretty nice model. Um, with the exception of the D4 or D3 or D6, so I don't know which one that is, uh, the battle cruiser that we saw on Enterprise, uh, which is like an ancestor of the Katinga class. This pretty much com completes the Klingon fleet, uh, at least in the prime timeline. Um, so uh, this is definitely worth picking up. Um, it looks great. Uh, looks like a little bit of weathering there. It's for the most part the model is metal. Uh, the wings are definitely metal, and I believe the neck and the, of course, the front, the front of the ship are, are plastic. Um, there are no clear engine components as we normally see on in warp nacelles or warp engines uh, on all the models. Um, you know, I would say pick this up again. But just be careful. The disruptors are very gentle. Uh, one of them came bent upward and I had to kind of maneuver it back in place and the other one I believe it was this one uh, was broken off altogether and I had to take some crazy glue to put it back on at least again temporarily until the uh, later one or the new one arrives the replacement arrives um, so yeah I mean overall it's a nice model um, it's you know it is what it is there are no uh, symbols of the Empire, which I kind of find a little bit of a disappointment. Um, there usually, there's, there's usually some kind of Klingon writing, uh, you know, Klingon text or whatnot. Uh, maybe a symbol of the Empire, but that is notoriously missing here. And I think it is also missing on the original Bird of Prey that we got um, back in, you know, several years, like 2013. So. Yeah, so here is issue number two or three, and here is issue 107. Uh, not much of a difference except for the wings and uh, the size. You know, of course this one is bigger because of the wings are outstretched, but as far as everything else, everything else, as far as the main body, the main hull, the neck, and the nose of the bird of prey are pretty much the same. Uh, they mirror each other. Uh, it's the wings that make it look different. So yeah. That pretty much rounds up issue number 107, and of course it comes with the stand, which only says Klingon Bird of Prey in attack mode and a various part number, and it slides into place like that. Um, pretty much the same stand as issue, as the old issue. And so yeah, that rounds up the Klingon Bird of Prey. I would definitely pick that up especially if you're interested and into the Klingons and uh, you're trying to complete your Klingon fleet because I think for the most part this this kind of completes it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. I'll try my best to answer you. And um, until then, Kapla.